Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lana. Welcome to another reading vlog. And in this vlog, I will be reading two Russian classics that I have previously read many years ago though and remembered very little of. At the point in time when I'm filming this intro, the vlog is already complete. And in this vlog, I read Yevgenia Anikin by Alexander Pushkin and Fathers and Sons by Turgenev. Uh, before we get into the footage, I wanted to briefly talk about these two books. I don't know, sometimes I feel like the representative for Russian culture and uh, that I should be educating people. So briefly, let's start with the first book, Yevgeny Anegin by Pushkin. Um, in Russian, it is Yevgeny Anegin. The title is the name of the main character. Some people translate the name into Eugene Anegin. I feel like if you're at all interested in Russian literature, the name of Alexander Pushkin should be familiar to you. So Alexander Sergeyevich Pushkin was a Russian poet, playwright and novelist of the Romantic era. Yes, I'm reading this on Wikipedia. He's considered by many to be the greatest Russian poet and the founder of modern Russian literature. And actually I just had a little freak out when I opened his Wikipedia page because I did not know he was a Gemini, what? Oh. For context, I am a Gemini, we're currently in the Gemini season and I'm filming a vlog right now about, uh, you know, reading books that are recommended for Geminis. Like, it's all about Geminis right now and I did not know he was a Gemini! Anyway, and Yevgeny Yenigin is probably one of the most famous things he's written. He wrote a lot of things and a lot of them are very popular. So I don't know what work is considered to be his, you know, most famous. This book was published in 1833 and he wrote this novel between the ages of 25 to 30. So around my age, which is very exciting. And this is a novel which is written in verse. It's set in 1820s Russia and in this novel we follow a young man called Yevgeny who is uh, sort of like a party boy in St. Petersburg and he gets really bored of that party hard lifestyle and moves to the country. There he befriends his neighbor, also a young man who is uh, the opposite of Evgeny. He's full of hope and life and poetry um, and he's a romantic and together they meet the two daughters of yet another neighbor and drama ensues. I also wanted to point out that one of the greatest Russian composers, Pyotr Ilyich Tchaikovsky, wrote an opera based on this novel called Evgenia Negin. <laughs> And there is an old film adaptation of the opera. I don't even know what year it is. I'm gonna write it here. <laughs> <laughs> then there is also the ballet Genya Yankin, which also features Tchaikovsky's music. <laughs> And something I did not expect to find, there is a 1999 movie featuring Ralph Fiennes as Evgeny Anegin and Liv Tyler as Tatiana. <laughs> I'm not planning to watch the movie personally just because I feel like it's such a big part of our culture that I don't want to see anyone else be part of it, if that makes any sense. And the second book that I read for this vlog is Fathers and Sons by Turgenev. So Ivan Sergeyevich Turgenev was a Russian novelist, poet, 
a short story writer, playwright, and his novel Fathers and Sons, which was published in 1862, is regarded as one of the major works of the 19th century. So our main character, Bazarov, a gifted, impatient young man, has journeyed from school to the home of his friend Arkady Kirsanov. But soon Bazarov's outspoken rejection of authority and social conventions touches off quarrels, misunderstandings, and romantic entanglements that will utterly, utterly transform the Kirsanov household and reflect the changes taking place across all of 19th century Russia. A timeless depiction of generational conflict during social upheaval, it vividly portrays the clash between the older Russian aristocracy and the youthful radicalism that foreshadowed the revolution to come. An awful and offers modern day readers much to reflect upon as they look around at their own tumultuous, ever-changing world. And I'm pretty sure he wrote this when he was around 40. Uh, so to give you context, I read Yevgeny Onegin for school. It's uh, obligatory for everyone to read it and study it, and everyone has to learn a part of it. All the girls in my class had to learn Tatiana's letter by heart, and I think all the boys had to learn um, Yevgeny's letter? I don't remember what the boys did. So this is something that is very present in our culture and our consciousness, but I... It's been so long and I have a terrible memory, so I had trouble <laughs> remembering even the plots. Like, I knew the general idea that, like, he moves to the country and there's something with Tatiana, and I knew there was a duel. I think sometimes I get the duel part mixed up a little, because actually the way that Alexander Pushkin died was in a duel. Sometimes I confuse if the duel is connected to Pushkin in my head in general, or is it connected to the book. It's both. And as to Fathers and Sons, I read this when I was in high school, but I didn't read it for school. Well, I wasn't uh, in Russia at that time, so the school did not provide a lot of Russian literature and literature class and so I kind of had to educate myself and actually have a lot of gaps in my knowledge of Russian literature because I missed a lot of works because they were not taught to me in school. And I remember loving it, I remember highlighting passages and underlining quotes but I absolutely did not remember the plot. So these are the two books that you will see me read, let's go. I am kind of surprised but also not really. It reads so fast and so easy. I don't know why a part of my brain was scared and intimidated because this is a classic and what if it's too dense or something. But no, this is... I don't know what the opposite of dense is but this is it. <laughs> the very beginning, the very first lines are very popular and um, I'm gonna read them to you in Russian. I don't know why. Мой дядя с самых честных правил, когда не в шутку за не мог, он уважать себя заставил и лучше выдумать не мог. Ah, so tomorrow is the first of May. The beginning of May is I'm very shiny. Um, has a lot of holidays. The first of May is a national holiday here in Russia that I guess can be translated into Labor Day. And then the 9th of May is Victory Day with a very big parade where we uh, remember and honor the veterans of the Second World, World War. And also it just so happens that Easter falls on this weekend. Um, so this year the Russian Orthodox Easter um, is happening exact, almost exactly a month after the Catholic Protestant Easter. For some reason, I, I don't know how these things happen, but that means that tomorrow is a national holiday, then on Sunday it's Easter, and then we have the Victory Day, so the whole country is uh, on holiday for almost two weeks, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. But since Easter is coming, my job is to color the eggs, and that's what I'm gonna do tonight.
wanted to update you. I am over halfway done. Should I keep calling him Eugene or should I actually call him Evgeny? The way it's written. Anyway, I'm really enjoying this. It's so fun. <laughs> I kind of see why we're reading it in school. It's so easy to read. Again, it's so fun and there's so much of Pushkin in the text like he talks he tells you stories about his life or like he goes on a tangent about like how he's different from um from onyegin that he's not just writing about his own life the only way the way that i explained it to my mom it's like watching someone's instagram stories and they're telling a story but in that story they're also including some other stuff and this is what it feels like so basically the plot is so this guy Evgeny Onegin he uh, lives in St. Petersburg he is as I said rich and super trendy and goes to all the parties all the balls all the theater but then he grows sick of it all he doesn't care to party he doesn't care anymore about anything about life about people he's basically just over it his uncle dies and leaves his estate in a village to Anyagin and so Anyagin moves to the village and to the countryside. His neighbor is this Vladimir Lensky who is also a young man but he is the opposite of Anyagin in terms of he's super poetic, he's so excited about life and romantic and he's just he reads like a little piece of sunshine like he's just so excited and happy and full of life third neighbor is a family that has two daughters Tatiana and Olga and Lensky falls in love with Olga and he brings Onegin along uh, once uh, to you know, visit this neighbor to visit this family and Tatiana falls in love with Anyagin seeing him just like once and she writes him a letter confessing her love to him um, and then a bunch of drama happens anyway, I'm having a lot of fun reading this book <laughs> I have not updated you in a while. So what happened is I finished Evgeny Onegin and I gave it five stars. And I had so many emotions reading it. Um, I cried twice in this book. The ending I read on one breath. It's funny how when I finished reading this book, I realized that I do have the memories of the plot everything I just read made absolute sense and suddenly I remember that scene from the adaptation and remember that scene from um, the opera and it's just like, oh, I, I know this plot but while I was reading it, I completely forgot everything that I knew of this story and I was just taking it in line by line and this book is incredible <laughs> and I love it so much and I was actually so upset and I was saying to my mom how I wish we didn't have to read this for school because I read this for school I wasn't impressed I didn't really care about this it was just like something that everyone had to like learn everyone had to know about I don't know how to explain it but I was saying how this book is wasted on young people or at least it was wasted on me I didn't get it and for so many years I sort of like brushed Pushkin aside as something that yeah I learned him in school like why would I come back to him and now I kind of want to go back and read other stuff because what else have I missed it's also very hard to talk about this book with you because it's hard to explain but Pushkin and so much of this book is what I can only describe as like so Russian <laughs> so so Russian it's such a big part of our culture and reading it brought so many um, feelings and I just wonder if someone who is not familiar with um, with our I don't know culture with anything Russian how would they react to this book and this kind of writing as I mentioned many times now Pushkin is such a big part of our education his portrait is literally everywhere in uh, 
each classroom I feel like in school like you grow up alongside him uh, memorizing his verses and his quotations are everywhere like it is such a big part of our lives so reading this in a way feels like coming home there's so many fun little parts where um, Pushkin sort of talks about himself there were two that like especially caught my attention one was like a whole section where he is sort of <laughs> mourning his youth and how everything life is behind him and he's entering a new stage of life one of reflection and calmness it sounds like he's about to turn 70 and it says i can't believe that i'm almost 30. <laughs> oh there's like a section about death and he was saying how he's not writing to be famous but he would like for for his uh for his work to live on after him and he describes this like fantasy of his of some man seeing his portrait somewhere and going oh that was a great poet and that made me so emotional because that's exactly what happened he's like revered so much and the fact that he had insecurities um like that and just you know wanting someone to remember him as you know a good poet that's so cute why am i getting emotional again anyway this was a success the second book that i'm reading for this vlog is turgenev's fathers and sons i always forget how it's translated it's not the most accurate translation because deity means children so it's fathers and children but it makes sense for this book and i remember reading fathers and sons and loving it but i don't actually remember the plot very well like i remember flashes of elements i remember the name of the main character bazarov i remember there was something about frogs and maybe butterflies and there's like a sick young lady and that's all i remembered i am now at the halfway point of this book and i am not enjoying it as much as i was expecting to because i remember like really liking this book and i'm not saying that i hate it it's just i think my expectation was that i would just be like whoa this is so awesome kind of like what i had with Yevgeny Yegin. it's getting more interesting now at the halfway point change of location arkady has just graduated from the university of petersburg and returns with a friend bazarov to his father's modest estate in an outlying province of russia his father nikolai gladly receives the two young men at his estate but nikolai's brother pavel soon becomes upset by the strange new philosophy called nihilism I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it in English, but in Russian it's nigilism, which the young men, especially Bazarov, advocate. So the older generation is pretty like old school. They very much still believe in society as it was back then with um, romanticizing the aristocratic lifestyle and the two young men, the nihilists, they basically believe in nothing of the established order, family, religion, customs, any established authority. So there's a little conflict between Bazarov, um, the young friend of Arkady and Arkady's uncle Pavel, and then the boys go to another estate and they meet a woman and they kind of both fall in love with her i have to say it's very interesting reading about these like radical liberal people of the 19th century they seem to reject the culture of aristocrats with it comes the rejection of art and music and literature that's poetic and romantic and not just non-fiction but that's all they do they just reject things without proposing anything else uh with the way they started talking i sort of expecting some like socialist things coming along but it never happened they seem to also reject labor which makes no sense to me i can talk i need tea i feel like the fact that this philosophy is so sort of vague in the book they don't really go into um specifics there's some like arguments about it but i think it's a little done on purpose because you really get a sense of these two boys who are 
I think they're in their 20s and they have this like brand new radical idea that goes against everything and their you know fathers are enraged and taken aback because what do you mean you reject this like how like how can you what, what do you mean you reject all authority like what does that even mean how does that look like that doesn't make sense that's against everything and uh, the boys are sort of like you wouldn't understand and that sort of contempt they feel towards the older generation that they're sort of like not stupid <laughs> but how the old generation is um, doing stuff only because it's been done for so many years and uh, we're now doing things differently because we're actually like making conscious decisions about our behavior and whatever instead of just following suit whatever like everyone else is doing so there's this conflict that I think uh, happens uh, to everyone in uh, all generations, <laughs> everyone has that sort of, um, if not an actual argument or discussion with their family but have thoughts. And as I said, I'm at the halfway point and uh, I'm not like fully in love with this novel yet, but I think stuff is about to happen. Something tells me that there is a lot of action coming. Hello everyone! Um, so I finally finished Fathers and Sons and I really enjoyed it. It's not quite a five star, but it's a very strong four stars. Uh, I feel like my feelings at the middle of the novel don't reflect at all my feelings towards the whole thing. I don't know if that makes sense, um, but it took me finishing the book, the story, knowing um, you know how it progresses how it ends everything else that happens to for me to really appreciate what happened in the first part of the story all of that slow work of building up the characters in the beginning really paid off in the second part there was definitely way more action and everything just came together and there were so many incredible things i told you that i remembered highlighting a lot of quotes when i read it the first time and reading it now i wasn't really finding a lot of things that i would want to underline but in the second part of the novel was like oh here it is i even remembered the exact quotes that were my favorites from last time and they were literally like in the last 20 pages this novel is definitely very interesting because it really looks at the family dynamics and relationships and at the same time it also puts all of that into con bigger context and uh, and then that bigger bubble gets put into an even bigger bubble that includes you know what is happening in the socio-economical socio socio-economic life in russia at that time i don't know if that was grammatically correct but let's move on it's not a long novel uh i got through it pretty quickly and though the sort of family dynamics is the focus of it there are two love stories in it as well it's a big win and i'm so glad i finally reread this book so for this vlog i had every intention to sing something but i have been having some issues with my voice lately and i'm working through them but i've decided to give myself a little break so sorry that's not part of this video i hope to maybe do more of these russian classics videos in the future let me know if there's any book you would like to see me read i'm not promising anything i'm a mood reader <laughs> but either way let me know maybe there's something that's not on my radar that i really should be picking up and uh, i will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching